Okay, I'm going to calculate the slope of 2x, but I'm going to do it in a way that seems probably like more complicated than it needs to be. First of all, let's all acknowledge that this is the x-axis, and this is the y-axis. My function is f of x equals 2x. That's the function that I'm going to find the slope for. In order to find the slope, pick two points on the line. So I'm going to pick this point right here. That's uh, 1, 2, and some other point such as 3, 6. Now normally, you'd make a little triangle out of it. And we still want to do that here. Make a triangle, and that's going to be how we'll calculate the slope. And just to review like how it should be in algebra, in algebra we do rise over run, where this leg of the triangle is representing the rise, and this leg is the run. It can sometimes be referred to as delta y over delta x, because you have an initial y and a final y, as well as the difference between them being what we call delta y, and that of course is found by y final minus y initial. Right, that's something we've done before. And if we want the x here, this point could be called xi, this would be xf, and then between them is what we would refer to as delta x, where delta x is final minus the initial. Okay, so that's all review from just algebra. Now, let's see how we would actually calculate it in algebra, like what numbers would we use. So you're supposed to substitute in the y final minus y initial into here and substitute this x final minus x initial into here. So the way that ends up looking is y final minus y initial over x final minus x initial. That's just the slope of a line formula. And if we wanted to plug the numbers in, plugging in, we just have to identify which one is the final, which one's the initial. Um, so uh, the y final is the 6. So write that down. The y initial is the 2. The x final is the 3. And the x initial was the 1. What we need to do in the slope calculation is subtract one thing minus another on top and one thing minus another on bottom. What goes in here, of course, is the y final. This is going to be the y initial. That's the x final, the x initial. So we have 6 minus 2 divided by 3 minus 1. And we get, of course, 4 over 2, which is 2. So the slope of the line is 2. Now another cool thing about lines is even if you had picked two totally different points, such as this point here, in that point here. Let's see what the slope would have been if I picked those particular points. But yeah, let's say, let's say I totally start over and instead of using that triangle, I use a different triangle. Yeah, so if I use this now as my triangle instead of the other triangle, let's see what I get. Yeah, so your new points that you'd be using would be the origin, 0, 0. That's this point here. As well as this point here being 2, 4. You would find the slope by 
you know, y final minus y initial over x final minus x initial. This time your x initial is here and your x final is there. Your y initial is here and your y final is there. And you plug in the numbers, 4 minus 0 over 2 minus 0, and you get 4 over 2, which is 2. This example uh, leads us to believe that it doesn't matter what points are chosen on the line, you're going to get the same slope no matter what. That's because a line has a constant slope. But this is important. Curves don't. They don't. In order to explain what I'm doing in my next example, let me draw this guy's slope one more time. Uh, so here's how it works, basically. All you have to do is, instead of calling this xi and xf, they will be called x. And a thing called x plus h, where we let the run of the triangle be h. All right, now for our y values, what we're going to do is we're going to let them be represented by f of something. So every time you have an input like x here, and you want to know the height of the function off the axis, it's f of x. You plug the input into the function. That height's going to be represented by f of x. So what do you think this guy is going to be considering that x plus h is now the input exactly. Just f of x plus h, that's all. Um, so now we want to calculate the slope. And keep in mind, f of x plus h is this whole height here. We want to calculate the slope using the rise and the run. And it's still going to be rise over run. But this time, what we're saying is that we don't even need any numbers at all in order to find the slope. Not only that, but we don't even need to know what the function is. It could be anything. And this concept would still hold for any kind of line or even curve, as we'll see. But OK, um, let's try it now. What do you think goes in place of the run, first of all? Because I feel like that's the easier one of the two. Yeah, that's the easy one. The run is simply the letter H. What about the rise now? We need a change, a difference between the upper minus the lower. It is F of X plus H minus f of x. It's called the difference quotient. So with that in mind, let's try to apply it to this particular function. Uh, the difference quotient would apply to any function, but now we want to apply it to 2x. And how would that work, right? So what you got to do is I would recommend not trying to plug it all in at once, but instead, perhaps just on the side, writing down a formula for what you think f of x plus h would be, and write down what you think f of x would be. So what do you think f of x is here? That's kind of the easier of the two, I would say. Yeah, it says it right here. f of x is 2x. That's the function we're investigating. Now, if that's 2x, what would be f of x plus h then? All right, um, let me ask you this. What would be f of y? Maybe that's a hard one. What would be f of apple? Two apple, perfect. Here's what I do. Whenever I want to uh, plug something into my function, I just automatically put open parentheses there. It's just a good habit to have because then no matter what comes into the parentheses here, like even if it's apple, 
then all you got to do is put the apple in the parentheses. So if you have f of x plus h, and let's say first you write it out like this with your open parentheses, then you're ready to plug in the thing that goes in those parentheses. But it's x plus h that goes in there. See? It has to be in parentheses. All right, now that we have that, now we're ready to solve the problem. Because what we have to do is called substitution. Substitute this into here. And substitute this into there. You could think about it like you want to do something minus something all over h this is what you need to do. Okay, but the thing on the left needs to be this. And the thing on the right needs to be this. So you see what I'm getting at here? I'm about to substitute these things in. All right, so what goes on the left? 2x plus h. What goes on the right? 2x. And that would be it. That would be the end of the problem, basically. The homework system's going to say, even though that's correct, we want to go a little bit farther. We want to get it to simplest form. So in order to get it to simplest form, you got to use things like distribute 2x plus 2h minus 2x all over h. You want to cancel anything that can cancel, such as things that have opposite sign. It's common for that to happen. You get 2h over h. And then the final answer is 2. So what does this mean? The slope of the line f of x equals 2x is 2 no matter what location x is chosen and no matter what the size of h the run of the triangle is. So that's a pretty profound statement uh, and a pretty profound result. What it means is that if you have the line y equals 2x, the result of this shows that, that you could pick any number for x and any size of h. And if you were to calculate the slope using a triangle like this, the thing is going to have a slope of 2 no matter what is what that says. Slope is always 2. Curves aren't like that though. Okay, curves are much more complicated. So let's try one now for x squared. Alright, y'all remember the days of playing outside, right? Okay, let's pretend that this is a valley where you might be walking, you know, at first, you know, you're here, and you're gonna walk to the right, because we always think about moving to the right in math, only because of the convention that the positive x direction's on the right. This is, of course, the y. So as you head down the hill, we saw in the previous section that this is a decreasing slope. It's called decreasing. And at some point, you get to the very bottom, of the valley. We said that this was called a local min, that point. And from there it's going to be all, uh, you know, uphill. So I'm going to pick two points on my curve. I'll pick that point and I think this point. Now imagine the difference of being here pretty close to the bottom base of the valley there, lowest point, versus being up here. Now I'll ask you, where is it easier to walk? 
at the bottom of the hill or at the top of it? Yeah, the bottom. Okay, your slopes are low there. It's almost like if you're down here, you're almost like walking on level ground. But up here, we have a very steep slope. And here, there's some kind of slope. But what would you say? Is it as steep at point A versus point B? Or is uh, B steeper than A? What would you say? Yeah, B is steeper. So let's write that in just for reference. There's some kind of low slope, low grade slope here. So what this concept shows is that there is a changing slope on this curve. The slope is actually changing continuously all the time. So what you do is you try to approximate the slope by drawing a line from one point on the curve to another. That uh, line that I'm drawing that is called a secant. It's supposed to be our best approximation of the slope of the curve. Now, if you move the thing around, because I can do that on this program, if you look here, does the slope of the blue line match the slope of the curve? Who's steeper, the blue line or the curve at this point? The blue, yeah, yeah. It's got a higher slope. Okay. You can move it over here. Who's steeper? The blue line or the green that the guy's walking on? The blue line's steeper. <coughs> over here, we see that the blue line doesn't match the slope of the curve at all. The curve's going down, and your blue line's going up. This simple thought experiment shows that the slope of that curve is changing all the time. But now take them to point B. I'll ask you now who's steeper? The green terrain or the blue? A higher angle means steeper curve. What would you say? Yeah, the green's steeper. There's going to be some point on this curve where the slope of the blue exactly matches the slope of the green. And if you move the thing around, you can probably find that point. Where does it look like it is? Yeah, probably at two. Anything unusual about that? Like, this seems like, wow, that's kind of weird. Or what's significant about it relative to the other points? Well, this point's got an x of one, and this one has an x of three. Isn't that weird? that the slope is matching perfectly right in the middle of the interval? It's not just a coincidence. But my point is that somewhere that slope matches. So this slope is called an average slope. The slope of the secant is called the average slope of the curve. However, whenever you call it an average slope of a curve, you have to say the interval that you're talking about. I'm going to call this one x, and this one I'm going to call x plus h. So what we want to do is we want to make a triangle out of that secant. So go ahead and sketch the rest of the triangle. Now I'll shade in this triangle. So this is the slope that we need to calculate. So let's calculate it. We're going to still use the same formula as before where this height is f of x and this height here, this height's going to be f of x plus h. The rise is f of x plus h minus f of x. The run is just h. So we do the difference quotient. m equals f of x plus h minus f of x over h. And just to be 100% clear, 
I'm talking about the M being the rise over the run. However, this time, because we're dealing with a curve, we don't just write M, you write M with a bar over its head, indicating that this is an average slope. So it's not the slope at A, and it's not the slope at B. It's actually an average of the two slopes, which ends up being the slope of the curve somewhere in the middle. But now let's plug in. So remember our function here that we were dealing with was f of x equals x squared. So I'll ask you, what is f of x plus h and what is f of x? Because if we know those two things, then we can plug into the difference quotient. So first of all, the easy one, what's f of x? x squared, exactly, that's the easy one now. What would be f of x plus h? Remove the variable and just put parentheses where the variable used to be, and then take whatever it is that they want you to plug in, and you just plug it in. So we get that. Now that we have those two things, we can substitute in. I remove the f of x plus h, and remove the f of x, and put these open spaces in their place. Why? Because I'm about to plug this into here, so it will take the place of f of x plus h, and I'm gonna plug this into here, because it will take the place of f of x. So what do we get? x plus h squared minus x squared. Okay, so now uh, we should simplify. So we have x plus h squared minus x squared all over h. So you can't just send the two to both of those terms. Whenever we have a binomial like this, we have to use the technique of multiplying the binomial times himself. Binomial is just a factor with two terms. So we would actually have to do this. Now this requires a technique called FOIL, where we do firsts and outers, and then inners and lasts. So that's the firsts, this is the outers of foil, this can be the inners, and then this one, of course, is the lasts. Alright, so multiply x times x, you should get x squared. Then multiply x times h, you get xh. Then multiply h times x. We're trying to do all combinations. You get xh. And then you do h times h. h squared. Bring everybody else down, of course. Okay, there we go. Now we'll try to cancel anything that can cancel, such as this and that. And we can combine like terms. You got apple plus apple makes two apples, so xh plus xh makes 2xh. You get this, and you divide by h. Now you can try to cancel. You can split it up into two fractions. And then these cancel, and then the square uh, goes away here. 2x plus h. So what this shows is that the slope of the parabola, the slope of x squared, is dependent on where you're located. So the x tells you where you start. And it also depends on the 
width of your triangle even. So very different from a single straight line.